I'm on a winning streak. I'm on a winning streak. I'm on a winning streak. Yeah, I'm on a winning streak. 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 Yeah, I'm on a winning streak. And if you won't do that, if you'll contamin contaminate and poison the mind of my fucking loved ones, I hope that you die so that then they can see. Because they couldn't see it through your words. They couldn't see it through your music. They couldn't see it through your life. But in death, they will know the truth. In death, there will be no hiding. There will be no jewelry, there will be no car, there will be no house, there will be no amount of money that you can put out in front to say, oh, it's all good that I do this because I got this. What you got now? Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society. Today, we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by A.O. Conseco. Welcome back to The Rap Trap. I'm A.O. Conseco, fearless leader of A.O. Nation and the Men Too Movement. And this is, in hindsight, um, Juice World just died. Uh, woke up this morning, um, seen the uh, this afternoon, and seen the um, the announcement. Uh, and for some reason, I knew that it wasn't from him getting shot. For some reason, I I knew it was suicide or the Mac Miller, little peep, you know that type of shit. The suicide slash overdose type situation. Um, and I'll be for real with you. I'm gonna go ahead and speak my piece and just let it be known. Uh, cause we got a lot to talk about. Um, a lot to talk about here. Firstly, this whole PO shit, it y'all know it is it's heavy for me because I I really walked that road for over half a decade um so i know how good it feel and then how horrible it feel to see everything that you've lost on purpose intentionally lost there's nothing that, that those pills are going to take from you that you don't hand over to them whether it be your morals your standard your integrity your friends your family your children, your time, your health, your reputation, your freedom, you hand all of that over. It's not going to be a time where it's just like the pills are actually just physically taking you and it takes those things away. You give that shit. It'll be a time where you have to decide on whether to spend this time, like all your people over here, and you decide because the pill man said he got some to leave and go down there 45 minutes up the road to get the pills. Like, so it's. You would rather spend time with the P.O. man and the P.O.s than with the people who really love you. You're going to make those decisions. And this, on top of the fact that one of my young loved ones, I heard them saying the words to this fucking song. I, and I take push scripts and I heard her say that word. 
And that takes me into this whole situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, child shouldn't be hearing that shit. Um, and so that fucked me up with this nigga immediate like this because I know what that is. And to hear a child say that, not knowing, saying it so innocently, and it has such a jingle to it that it's just like, oh, I'm just saying this song like a nursery rhyme, but it's not. So it's, and uh, what's the dude's name? There was a channel I was watching last night. He broke down the uh, darker meaning between uh, of Hey Y'all, the song Andre, Hey Y'all. He really broke down the lyrics and how Andre 3000 masked a deeper, really depressing message in a just uplifting, high color, high frequency song, but it really had a really dark message. And the message was, we don't love each other no more, we might as well get divorced. And uh, if you go through those lyrics, you'll find the same thing. Uh, but also through the melody of the beat, it's just, it's just like with um, uh, subliminal messaging, McDonald knows how to make you, what colors make you think of food and clean food and what music to play while you're in there. Same thing with Walmart. What music will make you want to stay in there? Same thing with fucking, nigga, you go to any, like, clothing store, they're going to play music that makes you want to fucking shop. If it's a hood clothing store, like City Gear and shit like that, they're going to play gangster music that make y'all, and they don't ball, and fuck that shit, I'm going to drop these motherfuckers. Finna drop these new jail on me, fuck nigga. I'm finna be fresh as fuck. Leave out that bitch like, damn, that was my light bill money. And it's this, you can do the same thing with music, and it, we go back to the fucking 432 of Hertz frequency. Something like that's a certain frequency where you can really damn near hypnotize people. But I'm not going there. I'm not going to the whole conspiracy theory board. We're not doing that. What I'm talking about is the responsibility of the drug addict to tell the people what's really good. You have a choice. I just said this shit earlier. You're either going to tell the truth about the pills to the people in your music, or you're going to lie to them. And if you choose to lie to the people through your music, you're going to tell the truth with your fucking death. Your health is going to tell the truth. So you can lie all, I pop pills, I pop prescription. They make me feel a-okay. We got good news and we got bad news. Hold on, hold on. But all my, all my habitual donators that always hear that name during the um, AO Nation donation conversation that we do every third Sunday, I salute you before we do anything. Um, to take your hard earn and to put it in something that you fuck with, it motivates me beyond words, period. Love. The good news is this. I'm gonna continue to do the How to Identify Nothing Ass Bitch series. Of course, you know it's um, a AO Nation exclusive series, so you have to go to patreon.com and become a patron um, in order to watch it. And once you become a patron, you'll be able to see all of the other unreleased episodes that I couldn't put on YouTube Every Monday we go live on the Big Face Podcast channel at 7.30. A lot of y'all be late than a motherfucker, but we go live every Monday at 7.30. Um, if you're a lieutenant, you'll be given the privilege to call in and state your opinion at any point in time during the broadcast. Um, at 6.45, you'll be given a call-in number on your Patreon account, and we just go from there. For all my new people, if you want the uh, Are You Serious t-shirt, it's $15. The Big Face Podcast t-shirt is $15. The Me and Two t-shirt is $20. And the Big Face Podcast Scullies are $10. Uh, go to paypal.me forward slash Are You Serious 10 
address, size, color, and what shirt you want. It's time for the bad news. The bad news is no one watches sponsored videos. So if you're a rapper and you're thinking that I'm going to get an IG sponsorship or I'm going to get a Facebook sponsorship, nobody's watching the shit. So the numbers that they're telling you that you have are bullshit. And you know that bullshit because when you post after you did your sponsorship, your shit plummets. Even when you are running the sponsorship, your fucking YouTube numbers are bullshit. They're bullshit. Stop playing with yourself. Here on this show, where we do not accept trash music, we do not accept homosexual music, and we don't accept that mumble rap bullshit. The prices for promotion start at $200. They go up to $2,000, depending on how much exposure you want. They start there. So if you don't have $200, there's no reason to come this way. If your music is not up to par, there's no reason to come this way. I explain the packages as soon as you come in the inbox and say, Hey, I got my budget together with the packages. I'm not putting out no fucking price sheet so you can pass that shit to your fucking homosexual homeboy and send him my fucking way. Ain't no fucking price sheet because everybody can't get on this show. I want to see your motherfucking profile. I want to check, see what the fuck I'm fucking with. This show has integrity. That's why we rock the way we rock. But you keep paying that $25, $35 to a fucking sponsorship, which no one sees. They scroll right past it. And you'll be a fucking 50-year-old rapper. And that's just what it is. Just shit together, be home. How do you feel now, my nigga? How does your family feel? How your mama feel? I can't even ask you how your bitch feel because... If you notice, my, we finna go there. If you notice, I'm gonna say this shit, dog. Every one of these motherfuckers that then died on that pill shit, all of them had white girlfriends. Fuck that shit, my nigga. I'm gonna speak on it, nigga. Fuck that shit. Because that's really, fuck it, my nigga. That pill shit is a white boy thing. It's not for us. It's not for us. If you don't get shit else out of this video, what I want, and I, so you don't think I'm just talking, I want us to talk about pills and music the same way, or us as fans, to look at people that talk about popping pills in their music the same way we look at motherfuckers who would talk about shooting heroin or smoking crack. If a nigga came, if Meek Mill came on a verse talking about, yeah, nigga smoked a third on my motherfucking stand, fuck nigga. If T.I., you know, come through talking, yeah, nigga shot a whole motherfucking ground, bitch ass nigga, that Taliban, that black shit. You know what I'm saying? Look, like, God, that's a fucking junkie. After seeing all these deaths, after seeing what the fucking pills are actually doing, we don't need nobody to pass, no, we don't need the FDA, no, we don't need nobody to pass no laws. We, us. Especially those of us who've been through that pill war and whether you came out of it or you're still in it, you understand the horrors that come with that life. So how in the fuck are we walking around acting as if the pill ain't on the same level of heroin and crack? To be honest, nigga, it look like crack is safer. Nigga, these are stars dying from this shit. Imagine the fucking regular people. This is what I've always spoke on. The stars are more than just representatives of that city or state, whatever like that. They're also representative of what, what the, the crime and drug, you know, what's going on with that shit. So if you see XXX uh, get killed in Florida, you know what I'm saying, by niggas jacking and shit like that, you know them niggas down there, bitch, is really, even though... HHS wasn't really a good representative of Florida, like the hood in Florida. He was more a representative of like the outcast kids. Um, but he did show you through his death, he showed you how real it gets in Florida. Niggas is really about that. You know what I'm saying? 
This shit is a fucking problem. There is no fucking hood in America at this point that does not understand how serious this pill shit has gotten. It's nothing... It is God who brought me through that shit because it's motherfuckers who are still in it and some people who've gotten out of it that are just not the fucking same. For everything, all that shit I went through, ain't no reason why I should still be able to even speak at this point. So I have to believe it's for this right here. If these niggas are going to glamorize and make this shit fabulous and nigga, we party, nigga, it's all good. If that's how you going to rock with these pills, like that's a hoe, like this pill shit is play play. Oh, uh, no, you ain't going to get addicted. What's good with Juice World? Oh, no, he had medical issues. Oh, no, he, he just fucking faked his death, man. It's a fucking video out, and he just fucking, he was just talking about selling his soul to the Illuminati. They fucking killed him. No, he said he's going to fake his death, man. He's going to get ultra uh, famous and then fake his death, man. So, no, it, I hate that shit, my nigga. I hate dancing around points. Niggas who pop pills turn into junkies. Period. Point. Fucking blank. If you like to pop pills, in a couple of weeks, your family is going to start noticing if they haven't already noticed it. And this is, you know, a lot of niggas, you can just pop pills and shit like that. I mean, if you just a nobody ass nigga that nobody's expecting shit of you any fucking way. You know what I'm saying? But even you know how serious it is. If you don't get a fucking pill that day, it's going to be a very bad day for you. And no one's speaking this shit. How dare you speak on this pill shit as if it's just, ah. Uh, Even when I'm popping pills, uh, what that is right there, you don't want none of this. I'm, I'm treating a motherfucker just like them niggas treated Ray Charles. Oh, no, you don't want this. It's a big bag right here. You don't want this. This come with a whole fucking lifestyle. You don't want this. This shit will have you jumping in motherfuckers' windows and just say fuck the windows and actually kicking those just because you need pills. You can't keep a job. Niggas and ran you off your job because you didn't, you, you, man, come on, you know for how bad this shit get, man. Niggas is walking around like crackheads about pills. We have seen it. All of you, all of us have seen what these pills have done to our family and friends. At what point do we raise our hand and say, whoa. Whoa, my nigga, you speaking on that pill shit too willy-nilly. You acting like that pill shit is just pop a pill and have fun. Hey, my nigga, tell motherfucker like... Dancing all suits and shit, but listen, I'm all right now. I'm not no nut ass nigga, man. I got shot 2007, nine times. You know what I mean? Nine times. By doing it, put me on purpose sex. I didn't know what that shit was. Real rap. That shit took my life away from me. Real rap, bro. I'm always struggling, bro. Real rap. Shit took my life from me. Real you shit, man. I'm all here taking dope now. This shit real. Young boys. Young boys, man. For the niggas don't like that, make me know this shit fool you on that rap shit, man. Real rap. This shit real. That shit had you on this dope fast and weak. Your real vice shit. start stuffing your fucking mouth. Real rap, My man. advice to you young boys, man. Stay away from the pills, man. Or you gonna come out the way you is. You know, how you feel, how you felt the first time that you had to actually not do a show because how embarrassed you was the first time you shit on yourself. Tell motherfuckers, like, <laughs> shit get, you know what I'm saying, like, it get, that's what I'm saying, for you to be a 
pill head, someone who pops pills and has to pop pills, for you not to speak on how you got to take A and D ointment to your ass because you pissing out your ass, and it's burning your shit like the stomach acid is burning your asshole so bad that you have to rub A and D ointment on your ass for next time, for the next time, which is probably five minutes from now when you gon' shit again and how you can't eat, you have no desire to eat at all. But your body needs that food in order to even fight what the fuck is going on. Motherfucker can tell you I was gonna take three days, you're gonna go through a draw for three days. Not the fucking case. Because even after those three days of, you know, where the, the, the worst part is over, which sometimes it'll take seven fucking days. Your mind, your mind, more than anything, is still on pills. You'll accidentally go three days without pills because you can't find none. You don't got a call. You don't have no money. And as soon as the fourth day hits, so you done went through the worst part, they'll say, of the withdrawals, you'll go pop a fucking pill. Because that's what your mind wants. And this will string you along for years and fucking years. How fucking dare you speak about this pill shit and you know how much I don't fuck with weed, but speak about this pill shit like it's just like smoking a fucking blunt. I, my nigga, I know what this, this, that weed shit, because that shit is more mental than anything. Trust me, I got, I got niggas I'm trying to get off weed right now and it's not a pretty sight. It is, but it's all, it's mental. That pill shit? That pill shit has motherfuckers in prison. And you you can't judge motherfuckers. I, well, I, I, like I said, it's, you know, doing that gay shit. Like, nah, my nigga, like that's, you kind of some other shit. But. I'm sure they didn't think, it's usually white boys too, but I'm sure they didn't think that they would be that fucked up. But in prison, for a piece of seduction, niggas are white boys. Never seen a nigga do this, but I'm just telling you what it is. They're white listeners too. They're letting motherfuckers fuck them. Supposedly straight people. This is what the fuck it did to them. I'm going to make sure I put that video of that dude, um... From Philadelphia said he got shot. Doctor gave him fucking uh purpose and shit like that. Fast forward a little bit. Fucking heroin at it. At some point, pills become too fucking expensive. It's cheaper to get heroin. And at that point in your life, you just want the pain to stop. How ironic is that? How ironic is that that pain pills cause physical pain? That stomach locking up, like the way that shit feels, at that point you would do pretty much anything to make that shit stop. So if that meant having to, you know, take a penitentiary chance and lay down a gas station or, you know what I'm saying, have to, you know, rob one of your homeboys and shit like that. This is how you lose. This is how you lose shit over time. And then your reputation turns into, that's a shite dad, dirt ass, and then a nigga robbed his sister, stole from his mama. These are all things that, I mean, niggas do that shit, but it's not really us that do that shit. Like, we'll go and rob but we won't bring that shit home and we won't do that homo shit. But I'm sure, like I said, it, it's, this is what, it, it fucks everybody up. Like, it don't matter if somebody, it does matter, but it don't matter if he let that shit do that to him in prison. If I, in my mind said, 
I'm never gonna go and buy one pill. I ain't never gonna be that fucked up. I ain't never gonna be that fucking fucked up on these damn pills and shit like that. And then I actually go and buy one pill because that's all I got. I ain't never gonna go out this motherfucker, man. And, and if I ain't got the money, I just ain't fucking with it. You ain't gonna never catch me out here trying to get credit from, from no goddamn pill. And now you got, hey man, look, now you get paid on Friday, man. You can't, you know what I'm saying? Fuck with me on a couple of them. Just having to do that, having to ask another man for something, that's pretty much like you getting fucked in the ass to you because that's how high your self esteem is. Now you gotta come, you would rather rob the nigga for him, but it's still like, that's like, you know what I'm saying? That's why some niggas get dead. Like, niggas have died just because I don't want to have to, my pride is up here, my self-esteem won't allow me to even let somebody see me as a junkie. So I'd rather be seen as just a taker. But really, the only reason I did that, and that's why as retarded as Quando Rondo is, I have to give credit for him allowing himself to be an example, speaking on, I needed weed. And I don't know if I put that episode, I did not. That episode is on the Patreon. Go see that fucking episode where he said, I needed weed. And that's why I started doing more shit. Like, the dope will drive you so deep into the streets to where, like, you look up and, like, my nigga, I was known for hooping. Like, how in the fuck am I out this bitch with this broke? I'm, why am I in this this? Why am I in this situation about to do something that is not even on my heart to do? To where you gotta in your mind you fix it to where it's either me or you, it's me or him. Because you being without that dope is like you dying. You're not going to be able to function. And I remember the white boy Clay saying that to me. I was 21 years old and I came over there to, uh, to buy some pill from him. He was like, yeah, man, these motherfuckers fucked up on them pill, man. Oh, not like you. No, not like you. Because uh, I, I was just getting on them. He was like, yeah, these motherfuckers can't even function without these motherfuckers. I'm like, no, I ain't fucked up like that. And I'd be goddamn if I don't have no pills, there is no movement. There's no movement. You're just trying to find a way to deal with this pain and praying to God that somebody answer this phone. If I have to walk to you and you're eight miles down the road, but you tell me that you will you will let me, you know, or if it's a chance that you might if you see me, I didn't walk eight miles, and it's a chance you might feel sorry for me, and you'll give me one or two of them, a nigga will do that. And that's the lowest of the low. But you just trying to get through the night. Because if you don't have them, there is no sleep. Talk about that. Talk about that. Meek. Any pill popper. Any drink sipper. Speak on how what happens at nighttime to your legs when you ain't had no uh when you ain't had no tab no drink. Speak on it. Talk about how you can't get your legs to stop moving. You trying to go to sleep, your body it, it, like tired, but your eyes won't stay closed. Your legs won't stop moving. Speak on how you had to explain that to your bitch speak on that like say that's what drove her away her seeing me at this i used to be here now i'm a fucking junkie and the first time she saw me trying to sleep without a pill she thought i was having a fucking seizure but it was just my fucking legs and they wouldn't stop fucking moving every time you try to go to sleep the most just kick the fuck Speak on that. That's embarrassing, right? 
if it's embarrassing and it's a curse that you wouldn't want anyone that you cared about to have to live through, then why in the fuck are you intentionally or unintentionally letting my fucking loved ones feel like it's all good? You know that that nightlife is going to be conducive to doing drugs. Talk about the morning after. The week after, you had to take the car across the scale because you kept on running that bitch hot because it was more important to spend your last on pills than to put gas, oil, or anything in that motherfucker. Talk about the people you've seen go from having the house, the car, the dog with the fence and the family to out here on the street. And don't say it just in a in a, a fleeting verse. Let that be what you speak about. Let them know there is no difference between the pills and the heroin. Just down the road a little bit further. Same fucking street, just down a little bit further. And if you won't do that, if you'll Contamin contaminate and poison the mind of my fucking loved ones. I hope that you die so that then they can see. Because they couldn't see it through your words. They couldn't see it through your music. They couldn't see it through your life. But in death, they will know the truth. In death, there will be no hiding. There will be no jewelry, there will be no car, there will be no house, there will be no amount of money that you can put out in front to say, oh, it's all good that I do this because I got this. What you got now? So again, I said the same thing with the XX exemption, I'll say the same thing now. This is so good for the culture. This is so good for our community. Because it's undeniable that we have a fucking problem and that this pill shit isn't innocent. It isn't hunky-dory. It isn't willy-nilly. Popping pills is a fucking life choice. Not something that you do at nighttime and it's all good. It doesn't happen like that. It will go from weekend to weekend, to day to day, to minute to minute, to I can't live without the motherfuckers. There are no pills there? Well, let's go here. Well, we got to show over here. Nigga, go here. And you won't be able to see it because you feel like, oh, well, shit, I, I got him now I can think. All right. Sada, baby, he says it in his music. I can't function without my pills. I'm not talking without my... Ain't no, like, there is no sex. Dog, I remember, like, I fucked a bitch. I fucked a bitch for nine tabs. I fucked a bitch. She was not attractive. She was not attractive. And for nine tabs, I fucked them. And essentially, I did that a lot because I would be with a bitch who would give me money and I would then in turn go spend that money on the pills. And this, and that was the, that's, that's good living. That's good living right there. And then of course, they, they won't know, uh, the ones I choose, they won't know about it. Of course, the one that, that, or you know, the whole, you know, dealing with a bitch and then you ask her what type, you tell her some bullshit, oh, my, my knee hurt, my, the doctor gave me some, uh, little tablet, I'm out, I wish I had something for pain. Oh, and then she go in her fucking parents' cabinet. You know that she don't know nothing about this pill shit, and you just playing it off. And this motherfucker all the way in Florida, and you say, well, shit, you can come, come down? Because you ain't got no call. She's not that attractive either, but you need the pills. So you're just fucking, and that, that was my shit. And that's one of the things that I had to pay for in my years between 26 and 31, where I am now. But between, it was 26 and, um... 29 I had to pay for all of the it was mostly it was mostly 
I feel because I knew what I was doing. I knew how they saw me. I knew what they wanted. And even though I didn't tell them, hey, we finna go together, I know I made them feel like that. And I feel like that's what I was paying for. Of course I did shit to niggas and shit like that, but they went in the street. If I, you know, take a nigga for, you know, some tabs, you in the street. You know what I'm saying? You, you, I, you, nigga, gangsta shit supposed to happen to you. But with a girl and playing with her mind, you know what I'm saying? It's like, and that's another reason why the three S's are so important. Like, you're going to pay for everything that you've done to a person, everything. And if there's a time that you feel like you've escaped it, it's going to fall on your loved one. Usually your child. So now, I so from 26 forward, I have I didn't I didn't fuck. That's why three S's didn't fuck over. I did nothing wrong to anybody because I understood at that point. I don't want nothing. I understood at that point. I didn't want anything to come back to me so before i lead a bitch on i'm going to sit in baldwin county with nothing and walk up and down the street and have folks laugh at me but i'm not going to do anything to anybody i'm not going to harm anyone i'm not going to do anything and for two years for two years i just it was so painful was so embarrassing but I kept, I was working, I was working, I was giving God a way to bless me when I did reach the time where I paid up all my karmic, uh, karmatic or karmic debts. Um, and it was, uh, and it's a blessing that he did. Um, and I'm so grateful. Um, but the world is a circle. It's that, so, but I'm saying all of that shit after 21. None of that shit was, I didn't, I didn't want to fuck an unattractive bitch. I didn't want to live with a, a bitch that wasn't up to my standard. Fuck a, you know, niggas, you know, what I, that's not up to my standard. I'm A.O. This ain't, this ain't my, you know, sleeping in crack houses and, and all this shit. And, and, you know, you, you, you play trapping, you know, but it's like, nigga, I'm, I'm in the crack house. In the crack house. This is where all the dope is. I'm the only one here. If they come right now, all of this shit is going to be mine. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to stay here because at least here, I can, you know, have a little money to get by. Give me a couple tabs. But... The difference was, I didn't put that on people. You, dog, my nigga, you can, you can play that bullshit about. I'm just giving my life. I'm just giving my life, my nigga. It's a lot of shit that you do, that you do not disclose in your fucking music. Ninety-five percent of you fucking rap niggas are hitting the fucking bag, but not in none of your verses do you talk about snorting cocaine. So don't hit me with that. We're just speaking of what the fuck we live, bro. What the fuck you want me to do, bro? No, nigga. And if that's the case, give them the whole thing. If that's how you live, yeah, pop. Tell motherfuckers, dog, if you pop pills, that is 75% of your fucking life. There's no fucking way that you're going to tell me that, oh, well, shit, I pop pills, but, you know, there's nothing else to talk about about pills. Nigga, that's the biggest fucking part of your fucking life. Talk about how you're pissing through your ass. Your dick does not work, period. It does not work. In order for you to be whole, you have to pop a pill. Speak on that. Speak on how, how embarrassed you are to have to go to a rehab. That's why I say this shit is for white people. Because they can go to rehab millions of times. And it's all fucking, yeah, went to, yeah, the fucking second time I was in rehab, bros. It's cool for them to do it, but we weak if we do it. It's not for us. And then we can go deeper into it. 
And this is another reason why I give a fuck about a rap nigga dying about an overdose. Because, nigga, to be honest with you, I feel like you working with the fucking enemy. Privatized prison, big pharma, music industry. Those are the fucking pillars. The pillars. Like, it, it's, it's pretty much like cause and effect. Rap music makes you want to pop pills. Pills make you do illegal shit, end up in jail. Leave jail, I'm going to be a rapper. Rapper, talk about uh, doing gangster shit. Go to the prison. It's just a big ass fucking circle. And I was surprised to see somebody did some something like a TED talk where he spoke on that shit. And I was really actually offended because I, I've been saying this shit for three years about the connection between, you know, the people that go to the golf course, the um, the judges, the DAs, prosecutors, uh, big pharma, big tobacco, alcohol companies. We see alcohol companies are being um, endorsed by rappers and shit like that. Um, what is it? Um, Michael Jordan, you know, Nike, um, some people from Netflix, some people from, you know, a lot of people in the... But everyone who profits, if I don't give a fuck how minute their profit is, I'm about to say like that, it, I must be burning in sick. This shit is just burning my eyes. Um, I'm not trying to cover up me having, if I had tears in my eyes, I'd say I got tears in my eyes. But anyone who profits, even the smallest profit off of the destruction and pain of the black community, they're on the golf course and they're funneling money into the music industry so that they will go out there and buy Kodak Black, NBA Youngboy, JD Young, and Young and Ace Juice World to promote the things that will make them money but will destroy us. They've been doing this since we know, since Rick Ross. Since they dropped that coke off to fight the Contra War in California. This is not out. Like, uh, that's, that's fucking bullshit. That's uh, what the fuck. Like Cointel Pro did not exist. Like we, like these things didn't happen. So is it really that far-fetched? And I, what I was offended with was about like not giving me credit on me putting the theory into words. All good, and you know, it's deciphering off of my theory and not saying anything about it. Hey, it's a guy on YouTube name. But, you know, whatever. But, I feel like you're in cahoots with them. If you go out of your way not to speak on... Dog, you don't talk about hitting the bag. You don't talk about smoking crack. You don't talk about shooting heroin. This is shit that people do. That you can very well be doing. The reason why you talk about popping pills is because... It's accepted. That's why. So don't give me that bullshit about I just speak about my life. Don't give me that bullshit. Why the fuck is it accepted? Because Big Pharma paid Epic Records, Def Jam, and Atlantic to find artists that would be the Pied Piper for these drugs because for us if you want to make something seem cool just put ice and the shit that we want on the person that's saying the shit so if I want to make um, Percocets cool I'll get meat meal with all this you know driving a fucking race talking about popping pills putting Molly all in a champagne and all this good shit right here Perk 30s. How dare you talk about Perk 30s when you know Philadelphia. You know that these people in your city have been turned into the new age crack addicts. They're walking around looking like characters, extras from Thriller. And you have the nerve to in your song speak that shit when you know that my child is going to be listening to it? No matter how accidental it may be that she or he 
is listening to it and you know that my child admires you and looks up to you, this what the fuck you gonna put out to them? I don't give a fuck if you die. I wish you would die sooner. So that I can say, this is what I've been trying to tell you. I know, my child, that you probably admire these motherfuckers you see on the TV that ain't did shit for you. And you look up to them way more than you look up to me. Because I, I go to work every day to make sure these motherfucking lights and this water stay on. But all day long you run around on your phone, on your phone, and you just... The fucking know this shit, you know this, this shit word for word, but if I tell you to clean your room up, you act like he ain't heard a goddamn thing I said. But when this motherfucker died, I can then tell you, this is what killed him. That shit that you want running around this motherfucker reciting, that's what killed him. And I would love for it to happen while the child is young so that I can put it in their mind. And that's a real scare tactic. The real scare tactic. Because they're not going to understand words unless it's coming from the person they idolize. And you can't, don't tell me no bullshit about your, your child should idolize you and, and all that bullshit. Because I'm not speaking on me per se. But this is the issue that we're having in the world. The working man who goes in the welder, the fucking shipyard worker, the lumberjack, the motherfucking carpenter, the motherfucker that lay concrete. Breaking his back so they got they so that they got air conditioned in the summertime and heat in the winter. Motherfucker stayed on the phone. I would die for you. This motherfucker wouldn't spit on you if you was on fire. But you fucking they words are like the Bible to you. When this motherfucker die, what happened? If you love him that much, then what you would do is make sure that you don't never go down the road that he went down. See, some motherfuckers do more good in death than they did in life. I gotta watch this motherfucker. This motherfucker will cut the fuck off and I just be talking. A lot of motherfuckers, uh, shout out to my nigga, um, shout out to the owner, uh, the founder, the creator of, uh, Olive Leaf Extract. Um, he's an herbalist and, uh, you know, he definitely let me know when I'm tripping about, you know, some shit I eat and shit like that. But, um, he was speaking to me and um I had a thought you know medically doing these uppers downers and you know shit that's slowing down your rep the respiratory system by the time that the people get to you they really can't do shit because your heart is just so confused to where it gives the fuck up. And when he was talking about that, I, in my mind I said, ain't no, cause I know I've had scares because I was doing that shit. I was taking Molly. I would, I would base, cause I had to, I was addicted to opiates. So I had to take a, a tab or a Percocet in order to not go in withdrawals. So I would take the tab just to, so I don't hurt that day. And that's another thing, the regression of high. You always chasing that first high. Don't ever feel like that again. But take a tab, and then I would take the molly, and now my eyes open. Like I, I, I would call it like I feel so good that my eyes change colors. Like I, I feel like my eyes would be like a green or some shit like that. That's how fucking good I feel. But then the shit might take you too high up. To where you, you so geek that you can't talk or you talking uh, like that. Um, so you'll take a Xanax to bring that shit back down. So now you just right here in the middle and you focus. But this is the most dangerous combination that you can ever fuck with. You think, I thought it was a fucking miracle drug. But I've had scares to where your heart continues to beat like that. 
and just being so young and retarded, you oh well shit whatever you feel indestructible, but I was thinking when he was saying that like I bet every one of these motherfuckers have had a scare to where they had that that moment where it's like oh shit like something just happened inside my body that was dangerous as fuck. And for them not to, at that moment, be thinking about their listeners, to be that irresponsible, you're going to do more good in death than you will in life. Because once you're dead, I don't have to compete against your stardom, your money, your assets, or the nothing ass bitch that you have on side of you that you bought her whole body. Now I can point out, look what's happening. Look what's happening. He's a star. And you thought he was smart. Don't you think he thought that he can control the shit? Don't you think he thought that he wasn't gonna let that shit overtake him? He didn't just one day pop up and just start taking this whole Kaladopin or this, uh, what do you call that shit? Uh, this mixture of drugs. It was a progression. Going back to the point where I talk about me having to pop a pill just not to be sick, not to be high, not to be rolling. Or, no, just so that I don't. Piss through my ass and my back don't be hurting and my stomach. Just so that I can function, I have to pop a pill. Where it was, you can take half a pill and nigga just, uh, you talking to hoes better, seem like you more focused. But every time, it's starting to get deeper and deeper into you starts to take piece by piece. It's, it's taking your body away from you to where the only thing that you have is a little piece of your brain. You are pretty much just one big pill. That's all you are. You're just a pill dispensary. You can make money, as much money as you want. That's why you see people on side of the road like that hold these signs. Like they can make $200 a day. To where, like, nigga, in a month, they could be on their feet and, and down the road. Some motherfuckers, some of us, can go to work for a day and don't make $100. These motherfuckers are guaranteed at least $100 a day. You go to work and get cut early and don't make but $49 fucking dollars, $27, some shit like that. These motherfuckers out this bitch, they're going to make $100 a day out here. But they, they'll never have anything to show for it. What they think keeps them functioning is the same thing that keeps them where they're at. And a lot of us, a lot of you, are going through this thing where you feel like this weed is keeping you sane. If I ain't had a weed, man, I wouldn't, man, shit, I would have been snapped on a motherfucker. And I said this before, if you didn't have that weed, you right. You would have been snapped out of this. There's no way that you would have been working at Waffle House this fucking long. You would have been working at <clears throat> Burger King this fucking long. You would have been made something happen. This ain't your fucking reality. This is not your life. But this weed, this weed, I've watched motherfuckers who will not spend $200 on promotion for their music. The thing that's going to make them rich. I've watched them not spend that. They won't spend $200, but spend $400 on weed that they don't have. And they work a, a, a meeting. Me, 
uh, minimum wage job. How, how, how retarded is that? They have our women spending minimum wage money on hair, and they have the men spending their minimum wage on dope. And we come together and talk about our fucking money problems. But if you put that money together, which I'm sure you have, make her do it. Write down how much you spend on here a month. Every month you broke, but every month. And, and, and I speak about the rap shit. Um, I have launched a new channel. The new channel is Tactical Operations. Um, obviously, Tactical Operations, um, when you type that in YouTube, uh, a lot of army shit's going to pop up. So type in Tactical Operations AO. Uh, you can type in AO Conseco. Uh, or you can type in Tactical Operations Rap School. Uh, because the series on the show, like, you know, it's the rap trap. And the show name is Hindsight. In Hindsight... Is tactical operations, but the show name is going to be Raps Conseco's Rap School. So just type in the, the link. Actually, the link's going to be in the description box. Uh, just go to that um, and ask for you artists. Um, this is why I give a lot of good game and shit like that. Um, it's a whole different type of channel, and it's really geared toward artists. Um, it's I'm getting too many questions when I'm doing these consultations. It's like motherfuckers just have these fucking thoughts that are just. But they don't have no one to talk to that knows anything. So this is for y'all. The ones who have no idea what the fuck. Like you've done all this bullshit. Campaign sponsorship. Uh, pay the, the fucking uh, people to boost your fucking views up. On some bullshit. And nothing's working. Like go there. And this this is what we're going to talk at. But another thing about this whole situation. That you have to know. Is all a part of the rap trap. I want you to pay attention to how when someone dies, there are people who are not going to come out and speak like me and try to show the people how this is an example of how we need to do something. No, no, no. These people come out and make sure like we know that Drake is just known for this shit. This is what he's known for. Attach yourself to something relevant and that way you'll stay relevant. This is what everyone, if you come out and say what game is like, this is what game is doing. Attach yourself to, I don't like, attach yourself to Nipsey so much to where now if you say something about me, you saying something about Nipsey. Like, I am Nipsey now. Like, you just stepped into his body. Um, DJ explained it like they're, co they're uh, vultures and hyenas. Like, when a carcass is dead, this is how they eat. This is how they survive. Off dead flesh. Like, think any artist who's coming out like, damn, man, condolences, man. We were just about to do a project. Man, I was just on the phone with you. We were just about to, man, this is crazy, man. We was just about to, man, uh, we was just a, man, we, 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 uh, we. It should be, man, condolences to the Juice World family. Condolences to the, that's it. Anything more than that is you trying to attach yourself to the juice and try to see if the shit stick. Period, point, fucking blank. That's all the fuck it is. Oh, man. Watch how many fucking, you know, you expect this shit from fans. You're going to see a whole bunch of Juice World tattoos. You gonna, And tomorrow on the uh, uh, Big Facts podcast, we, we should be going live at 7 o'clock. We're going to talk about... What's Juice World a legend? Like, that's that's that shit gonna be crazy tomorrow because we taking all the call ins and all that shit like that, and y'all know the super chat is back open. Um, but that's that's gonna be a crazy show. But for an artist, like I just don't like the fake shit. I don't like the fake shit. My nigga, you're trying like there's there um. This is what artists are going to do. Like, you're going to see a whole bunch of long live Juice World and all this other shit. Niggas are eating off of the dead body before it even turns cold. He's not embalmed yet. The motherfucker damn name made it out the airport yet. And you got a whole fucking mixtape. 
Long live Juice World. Oh man, I was just finna, uh, uh just finna, uh, uh, put some, uh, me and Juice World was just finna put some crazy shit out, man. Y'all listen to this shit. Oh man, I was just finna, this the song I was finna get Juice World on right here. Listen to this song I was just finna put him on. Yeah, this the song right here I was gonna put Juice World on. You don't think that that's just a little. Because you saying that you fuck with him, I'm telling you, I don't fuck with the nigga. I'm telling you, it's good that he's dead. If that's the lifestyle that you want to live, this is why I'm telling you, motherfuckers, some motherfuckers do more good in death than they did living. If you will not be truthful in what you speak about when you're influencing our youth, your health is not going to lie. It's going to be truthful. But... Artists, I think what happened is artists just took a page out of the CIA agent's book and learned, like, this is where the money is. Like, when an artist dies, the label, this is cash out time. This is what they've been waiting for. They enabled this whole situation. They, I keep telling y'all, they have a fucking checklist on which artists they're going to push, which artist gets the full attention of the label. And that artist is going to be the artist that is the highest risk. We're going to put everything we have into this artist because now music is, this is going to forever live. So it's better for us if we can cut that motherfucker out of the deal. Right now, we're having a split. We ain't splitting that much with them, but we still having to split something. Once this motherfucker out of here, we're going to give his mama $100,000 because we, we already did the background check. This bitch don't know shit about nothing. So we finna give her a bullshit check, give her a hug. Oh, we're so, you know, we tried to help him the whole time. If you tried to help him, you wouldn't have pushed him out there whilst him... Being that you would have made sure he was clean before you pushed him out there in that highly stressful, that high anxiety workplace. You would not have put him in that place knowing he already has a fucking drug problem. You know it. You had doctors in the fucking audition room making sure that he had something wrong with him so that you know something's going to go wrong so that you know he's going to be out of the picture. I.E. YNW Melly, I.E. XXX Temptation, i.e. any fucking artist you want to name. Take K, the list goes on. We're going to give our biggest push to the artists that are the highest risk of being dead or in jail by the time the record that we pushed starts collecting, um, start getting real money. And we know we're going to get a big boost. We know we're going to get a big boost as soon as they die, as soon as they get locked up. That's going to be our big, that's going to be our money right there. And secondly, some just crossed my mind. Oh, don't forget it, don't forget it. This makes this whole, everybody rap like the Migos and hit the shit, make all rappers sound the same. It more makes sense. It makes a lot more sense in this rap trap theory. If all these artists sound the same, all we have to do is push one out. He go to jail. He get killed. Push another one out. Push another one out. Push another. We can get them anywhere. We're just making. We're doing the same shit the Federal Reserve does. We're just putting out bills with nothing to back it. We're just putting motherfuckers out. We're just, we're not, like, nigga, we're just making this shit out of thin air. We're making artists hot. The artists that they like the best are the artists who just started rapping two days ago. Nigga, we're going on the street and just finding niggas, putting ice on them, get them a Lamborghini, and throw them a house. Of course, they're going to get a bad bitch because they ducks. And nigga, they're going to die. They'll be in jail in no fucking time. We made sure they have mental issues. They're on drugs. They have no support system. Their mom is on drugs. Their mama don't know shit. Their guardian don't know a motherfucking thing. We can make stars. 
It's a scam. The artists that are the biggest today are artists who are just now starting doing music. Not motherfuckers who know the game and all this shit like this and, and have been trying to make it. With that being the case, how hard would it be for a label? Coach K already told us it costs two hundred thousand to get a uh, um um the song what is it international radio play uh, play or number one on the radio some shit like that. But it's a money game. Plus we're Atlantic, we're epic. We have a relationship. That's why we're epic. Like we have relationship with these fucking late these radio stations and all the sp small spots that we need to play this shit day for day for day to where it's just nailed inside these fucking kids head they're fucking hypnotized by the music because they hear it so fucking much without you even knowing the damn song you know the fucking song with that with that and knowing that we can manipulate any award ceremony any fucking numbers we need to manipulate we can because it's just fucking numbers we can make it look we run the industry what says we have to, like, nigga, we can go on the street and find people that fit this fucking criteria. We don't have to go find artists that fit this criteria. We can find people, social media influencers that meet this fucking criteria. We can make fucking rappers out of thin air. And what they think is a contract that's, oh, just, oh my God, you changed my life. You saved my life. It's a fucking death notice. You can be dead in about 16 months. Get you in, teach you the little rap shit we know. We sign these little bullshit good rappers just so they can write songs for you. But we don't want them to get out there. We need you to get out there. So, in essence, you being a rapper signed to a label, which a lot of niggas are, signing these labels and not getting no love from the label, not getting no plate, and not getting pushed at all. And then they telling you, yeah, just, you know, whatever the bullshit they telling you. But you see, it's possible for Epic to push an artist out there because look at fucking, like, this is your label mate. He's on top of the fucking world. But they telling you, it's like, yeah, it's just, like, how, like, nigga, I, I've seen you with money. I've seen you, like, it doesn't take anything to make a hit single except for you to pay these people and make them play the song every day, all day. The kids are going to accept it. Like, you have everything. Producer, make a beat that's catchy. It's not fucking hard. If the song gets played every day, if every song that you've ever heard, the most, you know, a, a mediocre song, a mediocre song gets played every day, my nigga, all over, you're going to know the fucking song. And kids will accept that. And that's who they're targeting. Why do they need an experienced artist? So now what we see is the artists being younger. I mean, them obviously being younger, but being less and less experienced. Not people who've been doing music for 10 years. Shout out to this nigga called Jack Harlow. Been doing music 10 years. He just signed with drama and shit like that. But they try, they they having to push and call and have, you know what I'm saying? It's it's real rough for him. He just went on another promo run, and I'm watching him because, and y'all should too. If you're trying to be anywhere near this entertainment industry, you should like be watching everything that's going on. So watch what people say and what they don't say. Read between the line. Like that shit that Coach K said was very fucking important. You being able to pay for that spot. Furthermore, lets you know this whole fucking thing, this whole thing is built on bullshit. The shit that I'm going to be showing motherfuckers on the show, on the uh, rap school and shit like that, that's how you build a local buzz and, and how you get visibility, like how I did my shit and how I'm doing, you know, artists that I'm dealing with. Um, and actually, they're growing their shit from no subscribers to... A thousand subscribers, fifteen hundred subscribers, and but they're actually talented, so that's different. And if you're talented, the shit's gonna work for you also. It's just little ideas that you have to have within the industry. But what they're doing on a mass scale is just putting a face out there, and here's their song. They sent out an email blast. 
Charlemagne get it, Ebro get it, um, the nigga uh, Beehive in Atlanta get it, uh, Funk Flex, which is, which is Ebro, uh, but every DJ get it and they play it because they want a favor from Epic. They want to be in Epic's good graces. And their boss is the CIA, their boss is a fucking CIA agent. So they're all in cahoots. Like the owners of these radio stations are also on the golf course getting paid. They're in on it. These aren't black owned stations. They have white bosses. This shit's gonna get played every fucking day, all day. Because they know repetition is the father of learning and they want the children to know this shit. Even if you don't like it, you're going to like it because you're hearing it every five seconds. They're, so when a nigga come to me talking about how talented he is, like, right now, are you serious? Are you not seeing the game right now? If you don't have money, stop doing music. It's not that type of game no more. You're going to need information. And there's no one else. I, I don't know nobody else that's going to tell you shit like you need to be told. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to speak to you for free. I just don't have the time for it. This shit is so exact in the way that it's executed that it's, it's, it, it's, it's similar to a medical operation. Find someone, Juice World. he already has drug issues. 16, 16 months, two years at the most, he'll be dead. We know it. We're gonna get him back-to-back -back shows. The show's gonna, the song's gonna be so fucking big, he won't be able to fucking, to live up to the song. He's not going to be able to do it. So it doesn't, want, it doesn't matter how much money, you know, it seems like he's getting, he's not going to be able to enjoy it. He's going to be dead. You think the label ain't know that their investment was going to be dead? You tell me one person who invests money that doesn't know where their investment is going to be in five years. Who can't foresee like oh yeah that's that's probably not the best yeah that's probably not the best unless i was getting paid more off your death so when artists come out and and they start you know putting themselves in or trying to insert themselves into this juice world extravaganza it's because they've learned from the industry. Like, that's how you get paid in this industry. You get paid off of dead people. You get paid off the misfortune, misfortune of other people. This is what this industry is about. Have you listened to a rap song lately? I get money from 223s and jumping out of trees and shit like that from causing harm to people. This whole thing is that's what it's based on. So they don't think they're doing shit wrong. And and it, and it's and you know what's crazy to me is like the, the like the niggas who don't hear they can't hear this shit like this oh you funny shit just this, this, this that retarded shit like and have this retarded ass Excuses for why something doesn't matter. It's just like that's the people that they don't they don't really give a fuck about us because we're the minority. And that's why I say situations like this are good for our community, especially our families. Because with our children always, you know, looking at these people like they admiring these people and you know more than they do the people that will break their back for them and give their life for them some people do more good dead than they did while they were living while they were living you weren't doing nothing but have my daughter talk about prescription drugs in death 
I can now speak to her. Like, how, like, this opens up such a good conversation for you and your son. He knows about Juice World dying. He knows how he died. He knows this wasn't a gunshot. You can explain to him what happened. And because he admired him so much, now you can use that and say, I don't want this to happen to you. And Juice World wouldn't want this to happen to you. So make sure that you never, ever go down that path. All the rappers that are talking about this, this is what they're going through. You couldn't have said that while he was alive because, like I said, he would have pushed his money, his chains. Well, if this what I look like, if this what it look like if you're, uh, 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 if, if, in, when you're addicted to pills, and everyone should be addicted to pills. Look at this shit. I make more than your fucking dad. Shit, if this what a fucking uh, junkie looks like, then shit, everyone needs to be a junkie. My fucking car costs $2 million. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, that makes you right. Because you're getting paid to kill my child, you're going to throw that in my face? You're getting paid to poison the mind of my child, you're going to throw that in my face? You don't understand that you're merely a fucking uh, pansy. This is a fucking fall guy. They're paying you like you could have been anybody. You could have been NBA young boy. You could have been... Uh, scrappity dude, you could have been the weed weed you could have been fucking uh, Quando Rondo. They're paying you to destroy and poison your people. As soon as you make a song about killing a dog, they're going to shut your shit down. But you can in detail describe how you severed a man's daughter's body in half. And they'll play that shit worldwide. No streaming service will deny it. But say something about doing something to an animal. See how fast it get pulled off everything. Talk about uh, doing something to a white man family. We say something about killing my family because we beefing over Twitter. It's all good. Number one. But we it just it just don't make sense to us. It don't make sense to us. I'm not I'm not even gonna go too deep in that because that's just we going live uh tomorrow uh 8 p.m. to be safe, 7 8 p.m. The super chat will be open if you want to make your comments. The lines will be open to my lieutenants. If you're not a lieutenant, uh, you gotta go to Patreon and become a lieutenant so that you can call in tomorrow. And the subject is gonna be uh, is Juice World a legend? Um, make sure you go to the PayPal. Uh, make sure you go to the Cash App and support um, what we have going on. Uh, you know, YouTube it been fucking me over. Um, you know that you get shouted out every third Sunday when you support the channel, um, no matter what channel you support, you get shouted out. Um, make sure you go to the new Tactical Operations um, channel if you're an artist or if you're just wondering how to promote and market the right way and you want to hear from somebody who... You know, we're not just talking about YouTube. We're talking about real promotion and why certain shit works, why certain certain shit doesn't. I'm showing you real examples and shit like that. Go to it and see what's going on. All that's in the description box. And we rocking out. I'll see y'all in a minute. Tomorrow. Love, love. Don't be late tomorrow, neither.